Hello everybody and welcome back to the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast. My name's Bex and this is a podcast about knitting, spinning and all of the yarny, fibery, crafty things that we might all do. I am just back from Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Came back on Sunday. Yesterday was just a little rest day with the cats and uh, I should probably apologise for my lack of podcasts over the last two months. Um, part of that was because I'm racing my Brompton bike again this summer and I've had to make some modifications to my setup, i.e. I bought a second one which I <laughs> picked up this morning and my existing one is going to become my race bike so it's going to be like blinged up and yeah should be cool um but i've done my little shuttle run up to bridgewater in somerset to go and pick that up this morning so i thought that before i unpack i should probably do a video to show you some of the stuff that i got in edinburgh edinburgh yarn festival if you have not been before is uh for me not just about the shopping and all of the beautiful yarns that you can buy and there are lots of beautiful yarns um, but it's also about the social side about the people so uh, as we go through I'll try and do it kind of chronologically and explain some of the social stuff that was going on at the same time. So let's see I've got my suitcase here which I have not even started really unpacking yet apart from the absolute essentials so uh, let's have a little look and see what's in here. So first up is the Hide and Hammer 03 bag. I have been coveting one of these for quite some time. Uh, I saw them at Yarnporium and I thought they were absolutely beautiful, very much my aesthetic. But in my head at the time, I was like, I do not need another project bag. I do not need another project bag. So I didn't buy one. And then ever since then, I've been regretting my choice to not buy one. So <laughs> I bought one. Um, technically, my bag mule bought one for me. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> I sent Annie and Stacey from my group in with very specific instructions. Like you are going straight to H9, which was um, a yarn stories stand. You are looking for the Heidenhammer 03 bag in mustard. If they don't have mustard, you can get gray. If they don't have gray, you can get oxblood. Those are your instructions, go. Because they had a ticket for Friday, I didn't. So I was doing the day queue and so I just kind of sent them in ahead and they then text me and went, yep, mission accomplished, all good. Thank you guys, appreciate that very much. <laughs> At some stage, I will do a little proper review video of this bag, but essentially um, it's designed like a paper lunch bag. So you can basically roll it down to whatever size you need it to be. And then you've got this leather strap here that connects to another one up here and it can be basically whatever size you need it to be which is kind of cool. Um, you guys know that I have quite a lot of fringe field bags and apart from there now being a little bit of a, a negative association with them um, I also feel that with bigger projects like sweater projects they're just they're not big enough to continue holding it all the way through. So this one expands um, vertically and it has its little handle on the side here. And uh, the lady who makes these new is uh, very, very keen on sustainability and provenance and kind of making a product that lasts, but also a product that can be repaired and parts can be swapped and things like that. So uh, these leather straps are all attached to the bag in such a way that they can be taken off and swapped if necessary. And she's actually planning on having a little bit on the website where you can just order replacement straps if you need them. Uh, which is really cool. I'd, I've always kind of had that concern with the fringe field bags that, you know, what if something happens to the leather handle because it's sewn in, you can't really go and replace it. Um, I will do a proper little tour of these bags at some stage, but I'll give you a quick peek. Um, this is partly a spoiler. You can fold this down 
So you can kind of turn it into a kind of bucket bag for when you're actually knitting out of it if you need to. So you can kind of roll it all down and then it's a nice little bucket to knit out of. There are three little vertical compartments for things like crochet hooks or spare needle tips, that kind of thing. And then there's a longer slot on here. And then there's also a full width panel pocket on this side as well. So if I actually do this, you'll be able to see on this side, that's what the pockets look like. They're outlined by the stitching. So you have these three vertical pouches and then a larger one over here. So things like needle cables and stuff like that can go in there. And then on the other side, it's a full, um, full width pocket. Like I say, I'll do a proper review at some stage, but I've been coveting it for ages and I have one now, so that's awesome. Okay, so what's next in the suitcase? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. So the next stop that I made, or really the first stop, because I didn't buy the hide and hammer bag myself. So the first stop that I made when I got in there was actually to John Arben, because you guys know that when I went to the mill, I got some Exmoor sock and I was so obsessed with these two colours together that I got two sets because they are 50 gram skeins and so I just wanted to have a little bit of flexibility in terms of what I wanted to do with them. Um, so that is Exmoor sock which is 60% Exmoor Blueface Superwash, 20% Superwash Corydale and 10% Zwart Bless and 10% Nylon. Um, so I got those. The other thing that I also got while I was at John Arben was a copy of the annual. I don't know whether I mentioned this in or around the mill tour video, but instead of doing a catalog this year, they're doing a, an annual, which is pretty cool. And there's lots of stuff in here. Um, not just the catalog stuff, but also some other bits and pieces, some of which my friend Katie worked on, which was kind of cool. So you've got things like the, these sorts of pages, which are the catalog um, side of it. So, you know, particular characteristics of different yarns and that kind of thing. Um, you also have um, several patterns in here as well. Um, there's a word search, there's a spot the difference, there's all those kind of fun little things that you had in, uh, if you had annuals when you were a kid. Not that I ever really did, but I did used to enjoy Puzzler magazine. Yeah, good stuff. Um, anyway, one of the reasons why I had to get a copy of this is because if you have a copy, you can play Spot the Bex in here. <laughs> I am in here somewhere in some form, so you'll have to get hold of a copy and uh, see if you can play Spot the Bex. <laughs> I think my next stop was Ankatin Biag. I have no idea how to pronounce that, so I'm really sorry. I'm butchering that name, um, Sols. But I had to get, first of all, this little pin that I've already put onto my bag, which is the Sinister Cat sweater, but in uh, the yellow and gray. I already had the sort of teal and gray version, but obviously for a mustard bag, kind of needs the Grello version. And I got two other pins as well. Uh, one was her Edinburgh special edition one, um, which says, so much yarn, so much tangle potential. <laughs> <laughs> and has little um, Sinister Cats at Addenbury Yarn Festival underneath it. And the other one was the Your Yarn Broke pin. <laughs> um, as you might know, I have some cats that are kind of keen on chewing yarn, or at least Sappy is. Dexter's not quite so bothered. But uh, that is definitely something that applies to me and my cat invaded life. So I got one of those. They're very cute. And I think it was probably sometime around that point that I had a chance to sit down and knit with Grace from Babbles Travelling Yarns and Mina from Knitting Expat and uh, Ellie from Skein Deer 
and Heidi from Books and Cables. Um, we just, we were all kind of um, sitting in the Baron room, just having a little bit of a, a knit and a chill out and a catch up. So that was really lovely. Um, I've not really had the chance to meet Mina before. Um, I've met Ellie in passing a few times, but again, not really had a chance to sit and knit with her. So that was nice. And then I went and spent some time with Moss from Hey Brownberry, who is every bit as lovely as she is on her podcast. Um, I adore her. I love her. Just nice, calm, zen-like attitude. Um, she's fantastic. And she had bought some little gifts to give to people. Little pencils with Hey Brownberry loves my ideas. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> I also snagged one of Grace's little lollipops that she'd managed to find at the airport and they have little sheep on them, which is kind of cool. I guess in an Irish airport, it's probably easier to find sheep related goodies than it is in a lot of other parts of the world. <laughs> but Sheep goodies she found nonetheless. And then a little bit after that, I was um, standing around chatting with Ella Austin, who is one of my knitting group. That's, um, she's one of the group that I was with in Edinburgh. We were standing around just chatting and we bumped into Kate Heppel, who is the editor of Knit Now magazine. I know her from my Manchester days and Ella has designed for them before and so they know each other from that. And Kate handed me a copy of the 100th issue of Knit Now magazine, which seems crazy to me because it doesn't seem like that long ago that we were at a knit night in Manchester and celebrating her new job. Um, and it's, it's kind of crazy how far she's come, you know, and how far the magazine's come. It's become a real platform for emerging talent from designers. So that was really, really lovely. And it comes with a free knit your own grommet kit. Yeah, love Wallace and Gromit. Totally gonna do that. This year's Edinburgh Yarn Festival was a pretty big year for my friend Katie, Katie Green, who did some work for uh, not only John Arburn, but also for the uh, Wool Press Edinburgh Yarn Festival guide. This thing here, if you have a little look through that, there are some pieces of Katie's work in there. But it's also um, been her first year as a, you know, sort of being back to being a freelance illustrator again. And so I picked up some things at one of her pop-ups. She was doing a pop-up for like two hours each day. And I picked up the lovely little Hebridean sheep badge, which is super cute. There were a cho there's a choice um, of different breeds and I don't know what it was about the Hebridean, but I just liked him. I think the horns and the, just the detail of the, the fleece was really cute. Um, and I also picked up both of her little zines that she had for sale there. Uh, one was the Green Bean, which is a sort of continuing project that she's done over many, many years. She's done these little zines that she produces every so often. And um, she does not do subscriptions. If you are looking for a subscription, she doesn't do it because uh, the last time she did it, there was a lot of pressure on her then to produce something and she just wants to be able to do it in her own time. So those will come out as and when, but this one is all sort of seashore themed. Um, and there's beautiful little illustrations about things like oyster catchers and sea anemones and some projects as well including the cockle socks, which are super cute. I've seen the samples and they are so, so cute. So I got that one. I also picked up her collection, which is called More Than Yarn, which is the collected works that she did for Pom Pom magazine between 2014 and 2016, plus a few extra illustrations. Um, and I don't really do physical magazines that much because I just feel like they take up a lot of space and 
pom-pom isn't necessarily exactly my style. So there might be some patterns that I think are really, really beautiful. Actually, they're all beautiful, but some of them are more me than others. And so I don't have a physical copy of her pom-pom stuff. So I picked up this one. Um, and it's it's just, I've, I've seen them all before. I've seen all of the pom-pom illustrations separately before. Um, but there are some new ones as well, but it's just really nice to have it all collected in one place. Um, especially, there's, there's one in the back here, uh, Catastrophes reminds me of certain pussycats that we know and love. <clears throat> so that was my purchases from Katie's stand. I am also gonna get her Sheep Breeds poster and her Edinburgh Yarn Festival poster, but we figured it was probably easier to do that once all that stuff is back down in the Southwest. Um, she can just bring some to Knitting Group and then it's easier for me to transport home without the potential of things getting crushed. And then I think the last thing that I bought on the Friday, which was my first day of EYF, was some Devonia from John Arbon, again. And I got, let me extract it all. I got four skeins of pollen gold and one skein of, I think this is mm, Cinder Glow. So Cinder Glow, it looks pretty dark against these. It's actually a really dark purple with some red going through it. So it's kind of a really, really dark aubergine color. Um, the plan for these, and I do have a plan for almost all of my purchases from uh, Embry Yarn Festival, the plan is to do a Radiate sweater by Hokey Locatelli. So hopefully <laughs> that will work out for these. Oh, and actually one more purchase from the Friday was I got some Garthenor in the Ronus. So this is Garthenor Ronus in a couple of different shades and the idea of this is for it to go with the Ronus that I bought at Yarn Porium. I don't know exactly what it's going to be yet but it will be a colourwork yoke sweater of some description and I just thought it would be useful to have some options in terms of that so just picked up a few extra skeins of the Garthenor. So that was all from the Friday. Friday night I sat down and kind of edited my shopping list because I wanted to get a little bit more realistic about what I was buying and a bit more um, kind of train my thought a little bit more, get a bit more focused on what I actually wanted to buy rather than just kind of wandering around in that sort of haze that you get at yarn festivals where you're just like, ah, oh, there's all of this pretty stuff, what do I get? Um, so I edited my list down. Um, there were a few things that the vendors just didn't have. So for example, um, Le Biami, if they had had their Aran base, I would have been tempted to get another Mon Manet's worth of yarn. Um, <laughs> and yes, I know what you're thinking, it took you four times to get the Mon Manet right the first time, Bex, but you know, now that I know, now I know what I would do differently, it should be an easier one. But fortunately, Le Biami did not have their Aran base, so I didn't have to worry about it, it was fine. <laughs> but there were a couple of specific things that I knew I wanted to buy yarn for. You will probably have figured out by now, even if this is your first time watching, that I'm pretty obsessed with Isolde's designs. As I said to both her and Kate when I was chatting to them over the weekend, I was like, you know what, when you find a designer whose aesthetic works for you and the fit also works for you, then why not just keep knitting their patterns? Not exclusively, I knit other people's stuff as well, but with as old as designs, I pretty much know that if I just take about an inch and a half off the sleeves, 
then it will fit me perfectly. And that's what I do. I just follow the pattern and I just make the sleeves a little bit shorter usually. Um, and it's totally fine. Um, the point was absolutely proven when I tried on the Ravelstone sweater sample. And apart from the sleeves being a tiny bit long, it was a perfect fit. So one of the things that I bought was some of this stuff. And apologies, this is another name that I'm going to completely butcher, um, but Soldier, I don't know if that's correct, whatever. Um, but I have uh, three or four skeins, can't even remember, however many it takes to make that sweater, so there we go, four, I thought so. Um, so I have four, those are gonna be in a a Ravelstone sweater and I also really love the way that Ravelstone has this little contrast um, detail in the hem so you can put a contrast colour in, it's really really cute. Um, Ravelstone if you haven't seen it is her new kind of basic sweater pattern and the thing that I really like about it is the little details so the armholes are asymmetric, the waist shaping is different on the front and the back it's just really nicely engineered. And like I say, the sample fitted me like a glove. So I was quite happy to get hold of some of this. Um, I'm also really interested to see what happens with gauge swatches on this one. And I will explain why in a moment, but it will be interesting to knit with this. And I also got something else from Isolde Stands because this was for something that I've kind of had on my list for a little while, which is the Threatmuir or Threatmuir sweater. And again, it's another skein that's hiding in the depths. So that little collection is all for my Threatmuir sweater. This is Celtic Colours, which is 100% Jacob and it's the natural colour but then over dyed with various um, different either dark blues, light blues, greens. It feels really weird um, in the skein but when you feel the sample it's beautiful. So again it'd be interesting to knit with this one. It's um, It looks like a singles, let me see if it actually is a singles. Um, I went on a spinning class recently. Yeah, it's an actual singles. I did a spinning class recently where the tutor pointed out that actually a lot of commercial singles are not singles. If you untwist them, you'll actually find that they're two singles spun in the same direction and then plied in the same direction. So it doesn't look like it's a plied yarn, but it is two singles. Interesting, very interesting. Um, what else? Some little bits next. Um, I got some buttons from Textile Garden for a cardigan that I finished ages ago that I've just not got around to putting buttons on because I couldn't find anything that I liked. Um, these have little beetles on them, little stag beetles, and they were the only thing that I felt even vaguely worked. So that was what I got. Um, some spare higher higher cables because the cats have a bit of a habit of chewing on them. Naughty cats. And then finally, if you remember what I bought at Yarnporium, one of the things that I bought was a batch of Black Yarns Tamar with the intention of doing a wool and honey sweater from it. I have swatched for that probably about four times and I am not getting anywhere near gauge with it. Nowhere near gauge whatsoever. So I finally came to the conclusion that okay that it's just not going to work and I need to think about some other alternative. Um, I debated actually using the Soldier, this one. Um, and that might work. I don't know. That's why I'm interested to see how it swatches. Um, I also thought about using, what else was there? 
can't remember. There was something else that I had on the list w that was a potential alternative. Oh, Triskelion. One of the Triskelion bases was something that was potentially a match. Um, but in the end, I just thought, you know what, I could buy another sweater quantity of something else and then that doesn't make gauge either. So why don't I just go for the yarn that it was designed in, which is Brooklyn Tweed Loft. I have six skeins in total. Um, some of the others are hiding somewhere else. Um, but this is in pumice, which is just a nice kind of mid-grey colour. I've actually already started watching it because that is what is going on in the hide and hammer bag. So I did a little swatch on the train this morning and that was on three and a half millimetre needles. I've done my usual little Isolde trick of um, putting yarn overs in the base of the swatch with some pearl stitches to indicate half sizes or quarter sizes rather. So yeah, I'm interested to see how these swatches come out in terms of gauge. I'll do a few. I suspect I'm probably going to need to go down from that three and a half mil one. So that was all the Friday and Saturday purchases. And then the Sunday event was the make wool event. So I bought fiber. Me being quite a short person, um, it makes it quite difficult when you're in a crowd of people sometimes to be able to see what's on various different stands. And so I totally missed the fact that one stand had some rather nice fibre until I was doing my second round and then I bumped into Mina and Grace again and they were basically like clearing out the stand. <laughs> so um, I there was a suggestion that I should maybe fight Grace for the stuff that she was holding, but I was like, yeah, you're quite a lot bigger than me. I think you'd probably win. Although we agreed that I'm probably quite scrappy if I need to be. <laughs> so I did pick up some fibre from the same stand. So it was Hawkshaw Sheep and got a fair few. got quite a few little bundles because it's roving and I love roving. Roving is so easy to spin. I just want to sit and long draw this all day. So we've got Shetland in white. Let me just flip these around this way. So we've got two lots of white Shetlands. We've got two lots of um, kind of mid brown grey. Uh, actually, no, sorry. One lot of brown slash grey Shetland. Um, two lots of black Shetland. And then two lots of black Cheviots. There we go. Didn't go too overboard there, did I? Uh, <laughs> I think this was kind of panic buy of like, ah, I need to get some fibre. Um, I'd been doing quite well on fibre up till that point. And then finally, my last purchase of EYF was actually prompted by somebody here on YouTube um, who commented and said, uh, did I have any opinions about Romney and what was my experience of Romney? Um, fact is, I hadn't really spun, haven't really spun any Romney, but I bought some. because John Arbon had some Romney, so I picked up some lovely Romney um, and I will have a go at spinning that. So yeah, in terms of purchases, I think that's it. I think that's everything. There's really quite a large pile on this chair. <laughs> it's quite scary. So there we go, that's my Edinburgh Yarn Festival purchases. Uh, those of you who've been watching particularly closely might have spotted I have a new finished object on. Yeah. If you go right to the beginning of the episode, you'll see that I was wearing my first strocker, which is a grey and yellow. And now I'm wearing my second strocker. This has not been blocked yet, by the way. So this will probably um, look a tiny bit 
um, sort of cinched up at the moment, but it has come out beautifully. Let me stand up. You can see that as usual with the Zolda stuff, it fits me pretty perfectly. And actually a lot of it was done at the Zolda stands um, after we'd been round on the Sunday, um, myself and Sinead from my knitting group just sat in as old as stands. You know, we tried a few things on and then just sat there just mindlessly knitting. Um, so the top half of the yoke was finished at as old as stands. And then I actually finished the neckline yesterday. I've sewed some of the ends in. Uh, I don't normally sew all of the ends in until I've done my blocking, especially for the yoke, just in case it kind of pulls stuff in the wrong direction. Um, but yeah, that's really good. One finished object. I have another sort of finished object. So this is Skoga Fuel. Let me stand up and you will see what I mean about the body being a little bit too long for me. Um, and the sleeves definitely too wide. Lots of flappiness around the sleeves that I'm not really happy with. Initially, I wasn't sure whether there was enough contrast between the green and the grey in the yoke, um, but I, I had very vehement opposition from my knitting group, so okay, fine, that's going to stay the way it is. Uh, I also wouldn't really have wanted to put the bright green kind of next to my face. I think that might have um, been a bit too much for me. So, yeah. I mean, it's finished. I yeah, also have to keep in mind that I haven't sewn up the underarms yet. They're just pinned at the moment. Um, but yeah, I, I have to do something about the sleeves. Definitely, They're, the sleeves are, are way too loose around the wrist. So that's got to change. So yeah, there you go. That's what I've been getting up to and what I bought at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I, I did say some months ago that I don't have a lot of sweater quantities in my stash. I can officially no longer say that. And there will not be any more sweater quantity buying for quite some time. Having said that, there was definitely a lot of inspiration at EYF. Uh, Zwieg by Caitlin Hunter kept reappearing. There were so many of those. Um, which is not a bad thing, it's a beautiful pattern. <laughs> um, but there were certainly some that really inspired me. There was also a really beautiful geometric yoke jumper called Tensho, which is designed in Let Lopi, so nice cheap knit. And I can use the leftovers from my blue strocker. So that will definitely go on the list. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not going to feel the need to buy a ton of sweaty on anytime soon. <laughs> As I say, for me, a huge part of Edinburgh is the social side of it. So what I'll probably try and do is, I didn't really do a vlog as such while I was there and I actually took very few photos because I was kind of just enjoying it all happening. Um, but I'll try and do a little bit more of a, a recap on what I did in Edinburgh in the next episode. In the meantime, if you're looking for vlogs about Edinburgh, um, definitely check out Grace from Babbles Travelling Yarns. Uh, she did a vlog for her entire trip. Also, um, Mars from Hey Brownberry, and also Books and Cables. Um, I think she's a relatively new podcaster, but she has a, an Edinburgh vlog, which is very cool. So yeah, check out those guys if you'd like more kind of vlog style content on EYF, but I will try and do a little bit more of a recap of the, the trip as a whole in the next episode. Like I say, I just wanted to get the stash thing kind of out of the way and done so that I can put it all away and organize it and not have to keep you waiting for another episode. So in the meantime, between now and the next episode, you can find me on Instagram as Tiny Fiber Studio. On Ravelry, I'm Ibex. Thank you very, very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again soon.